Hi guys and welcome to Ribbons Boutique. Um, I have been asked by many on how to make the bandana dresses that I'm so famous for making. <laughs> so basically what I do is I will go to my local craft store or you can go to Walmart, any place that basically sells bandanas. Um, you want to buy two that are the same. And I pick mine up at Hobby Lobby. You can get them for 99 cents each. And um, they have all kinds of prints. They have all kinds of solids. They're very pretty. This is one of the most popular ones that I make. Um, it's just now back in stock. It had been out of stock for the longest time, and so many people were wanting this. And um, I just recently had a uh, request for a bandana dress for one of my customers' orders. So, And she wanted this particular print. And I think she tried getting it before, and, and she couldn't because it wasn't in stock. And um, I couldn't do a rain check on it because the warehouse didn't have anything available. So um, anyways, yes, we finally got it back, and I am working on a bandana dress for her. And this is what it's going to be made out of. However, I wanted to real quickly show you guys briefly how to make one. So the material that you're going to need is two matching bandanas. You're also going to need a tape measure of some sort. You're going to need either a sewing machine or you can just hand stitch. Um, I like to use the dual Coates and Clark. Um, it's really thick threading and um, I hand stitch mine. I love hand stitching them because I know that I'm getting the job done right. Um, if you want to be quick about it though, you can definitely go ahead and pull out your sewing machine. Um, if you're going to hand stitch, you're going to need your needle as well. You're also going to need a pair of scissors to cut your thread if you're hand stitching. And you're also going to need an iron. You may also want to grab you some ribbon that coordinates with the bandanas that you're going to be making the dress out of. Um, you're going to use this as the straps that will tie over the shoulder. Um, I've got three different ones here, and I think I'm going to go with the pink. Um, and I just picked my ribbon up at Hobby Lobby. It's $3.99, or you can uh, use a 40% off when it's not on sale, or when it's on sale, you can get it 50% off, and it'll only cost you $1.99 per spool. Now, you can use any kind of sized ribbon for the straps. However, I prefer the 7 8 inch or the one and a half inch um, but the only way I'll do the one and a half inch is if I'm adding trim to the bottom and I will buy that really pretty ruffle ribbon, um, which isn't grow grain. It's, it's a really pretty ribbon. Um, I'll include a picture here and show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so to get started, you want to take your bandanas and unfold them and then lay them flat on a surface. You want your first bandana to be facing up where the um, thread is, like where the outside of the dress is facing up at you and the ugly side of the dress, we'll say, is facing the bottom. So you want it like that. And then you're going to take your other bandana and you're going to lay it where the ugly side is facing up at you and the both pretty sides are touching because we are going to be stitching inside out. Once you get them lined up really nicely, you want to take your tape measure of some kind and starting at the, this is going to be the top of the dress. Um, you're going to make two casings. You're going to make one casing on this side and then you're also going to make a casing on this side, but we're going to work with just the one bandana for now. Um, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to fold it down about a good inch and a half, two inches and then you're going to um, iron this crease here all the way across. And you can do this first or you can do it after we do this. Um, you're going to take your tape measure and you're going to go at one corner and you're going to measure down about eight inches. Um, really just depends on how big of dress you're making for the little girl because this is going to be go th wherever we start the stitch at on the side of the dress is going to be on the side where the arms are going through so whenever this is folded down like I said about an inch and a half or two inches you want to make sure you've got enough room from that point to this point to be able to have the little girl's arm fitting through uh, comfortably and you don't want it too small 
Um, so I like to go down about a good eight or eight and a half, maybe nine inches, depending on um, the girl's size. So we're going to go down about eight inches. So once you've gone down eight inches, you want to hold that mark in place. So I am about right here. Trying to do this with one hand. And then you're going to take your needle and just poke it right there so that you don't lose your mark. Okay, so I've got my spot marked. I went through both bandanas so I don't lose it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off a pretty good strand of um, thread here and I'm going to go ahead and tie it here at the top of my needle and then after that what we're going to do is we're going to stitch from this point all the way down to about here you want to leave a little bit of room here so that it's you know it's more roomy around the little girl's waist or her lower legs I don't like to stitch it all the way corner to corner because then it makes it really really tight at the bottom okay guys so sorry for this over here I have got my phone balanced on my spice rack <laughs> and I'll remove the spices just so it's not distracting anyways I've um, cut my thread and this is I mean I got it pretty long I mean I'd say it's a good 30 40 inches long um, and what I did was I brought it all together where my ends were and this makes your thread even thicker when you're hand stitching so if you want to hand stitch definitely follow along with this part if not go ahead and grab out your sewing machine and just start stitching from your point all the way down almost to the end but not quite leave yourself a good half to a good inch so what we're going to do is this is how I like to um, thread my needle I will go to my ends and I will tie off And I will do a pretty good double knot here so you can see. This way when we are hand stitching and we pull our needle through the dress, it has something to catch where it's not going to pull all the way through. So you want it to be a good enough knot. So I did mine about three times so you can see there's a pretty good size knot there. And that's why I also like to use the dual thread because this stuff is so thick you don't have to keep tying and tying and tying to get a good size knot um, then I'm going to go to my other end where it's looped and we're going to slide this through the other end of the needle so I'm going to bring it over this way so you guys can see how I do this I'm going to put this through the hole and then at the top of the needle here make sure you have a pretty good needle if you're doing this because this thread is thick and if your needle is too small you will you will not get it through that little hole and I lost my spot I'm gonna have to put it back in there okay so once you've done that take your needle and just go through the hole and then pull and it grabs so now you've got your needle started with your triple double knot at the end okay now that I found my spot now that you have done that just pull it all the way through until that knot catches and see it's not going through it has caught itself and you're just going to do a basic saddle stitch um, which is kinda like what you already see here on the seam of the fabric but we're going to be working just against it like this and make sure that when you are hand stitching that you're doing your stitches about the same length apart but I will say on this side it doesn't really matter because this is going to be the inside of the dress it matters more whenever you start doing the casings so basically just a simple saddle stitch um, just going in and out like you've seen there I got my first stitch now we're coming back up and just keep doing this until you get to the end I just want to quickly say <laughs> when you before you start stitching 
your bandanas together. <laughs> make sure, and I'm going to say this again, make sure that you have got your bandanas facing the right direction because if you do not, you're going to realize it after you've already stitched it or when you've already got halfway done with one side or halfway done with both sides and oopsie you're going to have to unthread it and redo it again after all that time of hand stitching so before you hand stitch make sure your bandanas are facing the right direction you want both of the outside pieces that are going to be the dress the pretty side you want them touching and then you want your ugly side facing up at you and then the other bandana dress ugly side you want it laying flat on the surface that you're working on because I will say I am not perfect and when I first started making these dresses I caught myself making that mistake and I was like oh boy <laughs> this is not going to be fun so definitely make sure that you've got your bandanas facing the right direction before you um, continue <laughs> And if you have never stitched a thing in your life, guys, I'm going to just tell you now, this is one of the most basic, simplest things you could ever make, and it's so cute. Um, I'm telling you, I've never stitched a thing in my life until I started making bandana dresses, and the more you do this, the better you get at it, I promise. And it's so simple, like I said, you guys, these dresses are perfect for spring, they're perfect for fall. You can wear them in the winter time. You can pair them with a pair of leggings or capris. You can wear a long sleeve underneath them. They're just absolutely the cutest thing ever. And you can make them your own if you buy solid color bandana dresses, not something that is um, patterned like this one. Um, you can definitely turn it, turn it into anything. I've made them custom where I've added a plaques to them. Um, I've put that ruffle trim ribbon there at the bottom of them and they turn out so adorable and as you're stitching down the sides make sure when you're pulling as you're going through that um, you just take your fingers and kind of run it down in the direction you're stitching because sometimes it'll pull really really tight and it'll kind of bunch up so just make sure it's not bunched up too much okay guys so now we've got to the bottom so you can see about how much room I've left there. It's about a good half inch um, to almost an inch. Now what we're going to do is I came up from the top so I'm going to do one stitch through the bottom right about where um, my other stitch is. So I'm going to go back up again and I'm just going to tie it off. So when you're coming up just go through this loop of extra string you have. Just go through it all. Oop. And as you pull, it's going to tie it off. Just like that. And you can do that a couple times if you want. I'm just going to go through and pull. And it'll catch right there in the same spot every time. And as we do that, you keep pulling, but not all the way. You just go through like that. And so once you've done that, you can cut off the excess string. But do not throw your string away. Keep it with the needle because you've still got plenty to work on the other side. So we have got one side stitched, as you can see for the thicker. And when you open it up, it is nicely stitched all the way up. And we've got just enough room here at the bottom where it's a little gap so that it's not so, so tight. Okay, so once we've done that side, flip it around to the opposite end over here. I'm going to turn it and what you're going to do is you're going to once again measure down starting at the corner you're going to measure down the same length you did the other end which I did eight 
inches down. So you want to do that the same for the other side. And whenever you find your marking, once again, take your needle, slide it through, and then redo your, well, unless you didn't leave your string left on your needle, redo your string again. And I also, once I get this point marked, I like to take my tape measure or ruler or whatever it is I'm using and start and go all the way across and make sure that both of my ends are going to meet evenly. So go ahead and start your stitching again down this way. Okay guys, so I've got my other side measured at 8 inches just like I did on the other side. Sorry if I'm talking funny, I got my needle in the mouth. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and mark my spot just like that. Go through both pieces of material again, remove your measuring tape, and pull it through until the knot catches. Make sure your knot is catching um, facing up just like it did on the other side. Make sure you're stitching in the same direction too. Um, you definitely don't want to stitch in the opposite direction, then your dress is going to be cockeyed. Um, so go ahead and once again we're going to start a saddle stitch. I'm going to go up and down just like this. I'll do a few stitches and show you guys so you can see. See how it pulls? Make sure that's not pulled tight as you're stitching so that you don't mess up the length of the dress. I mean, you can do, you can fix it at the very end if you want, but I don't know. I like to go work with it as I go. And be careful not to poke yourself too. <laughs> All right, guys. So I finally got the other side done here, and now I'm going to if I can find my scissors. Go ahead and trim off this excess thread. Make sure you do that on all your ends so that you don't have any pieces left hanging. So I'm going to real quickly show you guys how to do the casing. Okay, so once you have um, folded your material over, I just measured mine. Mine is right in between one and a half inch and two inches folded over. Uh, that's from this point to that point. You want to go ahead and grab your iron out, turn it on, mine is not on yet, <laughs> and you're going to just um, heat up the crease so that you got a nice crease to work with and you're going to run that all the way down. And you're just doing the top bandana for now. We're not working with the bottom one yet. Um, so just go ahead and do that with your top one, make that crease, and then we will start stitching. Okay you guys, so as you can see, I'm just running my iron lightly across this part that I've got folded over making a nice crease right here and we're going to actually stitch right here along this stitching okay my iron has been through the works so ignore my need a new iron look <laughs> okay guys so I just finished ironing my top part you know, you can iron it on medium or high, whichever you prefer, but if you do iron it on high, make sure you're super quick with it. Don't leave the iron sitting on the material too long or you'll burn it. Uh, once you get it ironed, when you fold it, you will see that you have a crease and um, it just makes it easier to work with so that you don't have loose material uh, to stitch around. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to line our needle again, like I said, if you're hand stitching, totally up to you. If not, you can just go ahead and continue with your sewing machine if that's what you're already doing and just stitch along this same stitching here all the way to the end and make sure you keep it in a straight pattern because this is the inside of the dress so when we turn it over we're going to actually see the same stitching along this end um, so let's go ahead and get started with that okay so I got my needle threaded again and I always like to make sure I've got my thread longer than what I'm stitching so I know I've got plenty because um, I'd hate to run short halfway there and then have to re-stitch and re-tie off and then it just kind of makes a mess. 
So make sure your thread is longer than the material you're working with. Um, and make sure, because these are stacked on top of each other, this is why I said in the beginning of this video, if you want to, you can go ahead and do your casings first. However, I like to do mine after I do my sides of the dress because I like to make sure that everything is even uh, before I do that, but it's your preference, whichever you prefer. So what we're going to do is lift up our top bandana here, and we are going to not run it through this way because if you do, then the um, end of the string where you tie the knot is going to show on the outside of the dress and you do not want that showing. So we are going to do um, our first stitch from the top here. We're going to start on this very corner and go down and pull until that knot catches. And now we are going to, um, I, I just fill because there's already a seam here, so I just fill where the seam is and I go just above it next to my stitch. And you can see I'm working just above the um, original seam. And just pull. And sometimes you gotta be careful too because bits and pieces of string like to gather together. All right, so I got my first stitch here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do, because these pieces right here always like, as you've seen, like to kind of gather and get twisted into my string when I'm stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Okay, guys, so now that I'm finally at the end of my dress, trying to grab my needle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through just to the side of that one stitch, as you can see here. And it'll pull. And I'm gonna go through one more time. Just to get kind of like a back stitch there a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off on this end. So I'm just gonna go through the material a little bit like this. And once again, we're going to go through our loops of our string and pull. And it's gonna create a little knot there. I'm gonna do that one more time. And go through our loops. Pull it again. My loops are getting a little twisted there. So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm going to go through. There we go. So now we can cut off the excess. And do the same to your other side here if you haven't already. And now you can see we have made a full casing. So from this end all the way to this end. So whenever you flip it over, this is going to be the front of the dress. You can see that we've got our casing. Make sure it's completely lined up straight all the way across. Um, and your stitching is pretty good because that will show on the front. And you want your um, wide width of it, you want it to be at least a good inch and a half, two inches. Enough room to fit seven eighths inch ribbon through there and I'm going to also show you guys how to do that as well. So once we've completed this part, go on ahead, get that out of the way, go on ahead and flip it over to the other side so that you can now work on the casing for this last bandana. And what you want to do here, let me see if I can balance my phone here for you guys. Okay, what you want to do here is make sure that you got this bottom part that you just stitched completely straight. There's no crease, wrinkle, or nothing in it. It's completely straight so that whenever your top one is laying over it, they're lined up pretty good because you want to make sure that you get this casing lined up with this one. 
Um, so you want to just basically line it up with this one all the way to the very end. And then go ahead and get your iron back out and lay that on top and go all the way across. Hey okay, guys, so once you have ironed your last casing, stitch this end all the way down. And once we get done with that, we're gonna flip it inside out. Then I'm gonna show you guys how to run some ribbon through these casings here very easily. Okay guys, so I just finished my last casing here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this extra string. And now you're done with your needle and thread or your sewing machine. Let me cut off this other end. Okay, so the other thing I forgot to add in the beginning of this video that you would need is a lighter because whenever we use our ribbon to tie, uh, you want to heat seal the ends of those. So you're also going to want a clothespin, and all you need is one. So now that we have finished with both ends of our casings on both pieces of bandana, uh, go ahead and pull this inside out. I'm going to bring my phone over here so you can see a better view. It is completely finished. We just have to put the um, ribbon through. And uh, you can see where I have hand stitched mine. And that's the inside. There's the outside of that one. And like what we did in the beginning of this video, we also stitched down the edges and left a little bit here at the bottom. Okay, so now what you wanna do is work with one of your casings. You're going to take whatever color ribbon you want, um, working with 7 8 inch, like I mentioned, this is hot pink and it coordinates really well with it. Um, so go ahead and heat seal the ends of your ribbon. Uh, you want to cut this out to measure about 30 inches long per piece. So you're gonna cut two pieces 30 inches long. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I'm going to just heat seal the ends by lightly running my lighter across the end of the ribbon. And if you want to, you can even cut your ribbon out of design, which I think I'm going to instead of leaving it just plain. So if you want to do that, you can just stack your ribbon on top of each other like this, where it's got a loop. And then just flip the top one over. And then we're going to just cut at an angle. So you guys can see I'll turn here. I'm just cutting at an angle. And then once you get done cutting, go ahead and heat seal. Gotta get some new scissors. These here just aren't wanting to cut very well for me. There we go. So now, your, the ends of your ribbon, I'm gonna go ahead and heat seal this one one more time. Okay, so now we've got our ribbon ends heat sealed right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with this other piece. So stack on top of each other and then flip one. And then just cut at one corner and go to the other side with it. There we go. Now what we're going to do is you're going to take one of your ribbons and your clothespin. You're just going to clip the end of your ribbon here like this. So now you've got it like that. And then take your casing and open it up here on the side and just put this in there. Yeah, it's got my daughter's name on it. These were for my baby shower. 
and then just guide it all the way through. Let's see. And there you go. Came through. See, we got it through on both ends. Easy, easy. Okay, now we're gonna do our other side. Clip the end of your ribbon. Open up the edge of the casing here and then just stick it in and guide it through. And there you have it. Now we've got our ribbon through both ends of our dress. Okay guys, now what I like to do is um, take one end and hold it and then reach over here to your other end and put all the ribbons together and hold them with one hand and grab right here and just pull towards the center. You have to, you can stick your fingers inside the casings to help a little bit, just like that. So it's all gathered. I'm going to show you guys Oops. real quickly what I'm talking about. Like this. Alright. So now that you have done that, your dress is done. It's ready to go, you guys. And it's so super cute and fun and frilly. Perfect for spring. Perfect for fall. You can wear it, like I said, with some leggings. Um... Hey guys, so I have got the dress pulled in the center uh, with the ribbon coming out on both ends and I got it clipped up here to show you guys what it looks like whenever you get it together and if you look on this side you can see where we stitched our edges and then um, you will see where it stops right here and then this right here is plenty of room for the little girl to have her arm through. And then these up here will just tie over each side of her shoulders. And there you have it. A beautiful bandana dress. Literally takes 30 minutes if you don't have kids. <laughs> this video took me like three hours to get up for you guys because I kept having to attend to my kids. But anywho, here it is, the bandana dress. I hope you guys found this tutorial easy. I know the quality of this video was really crappy, but I do apologize. I hope you guys get the idea. If you do make you a bandana dress, be sure to upload it to my uh, Ribbons Boutique Facebook fan page and um, share it with us for us all to see. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please um, comment below or you can, you know, definitely inbox me or email me. All my information is in the down bar below and I'll talk to you all later. Bye guys.